Hello, welcome to the episode of Motoring Middle East. Today I'm checking out the Cadillac XT4. And if it seems a bit familiar, well, you've obviously seen my first drive from Seoul DXB about six months ago. The XT4 is Cadillac's baby uh, SUV. It's its entry-level model. Prices start at 145,000 dirhams. There's only one engine. It's a two-liter turbo with about 250 horsepower and about 300 something you didn't it doesn't matter nobody cares about the output of this engine it is however a new engine so it's weird because gm has a two-liter turbo that they put in the camaro and a whole bunch of other cars including the um what's the other one the other small suv that i will now put up on screen but um this one is an all new engine for cadillac i'm not quite sure why they're an all new engine because the old one was perfectly fine but hey 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 um, it does come with a 9-speed auto, hopefully I've got that right, which is the same one as the XC40, hope I've also got that right. Um, it's a quite a smart looking car. At the time I felt a little bit eh about it when we did the launch. The launch wasn't very exciting and it was more focused on sneakers. Don't ask me why. Now that I've got to spend some time with the car, approximately a week with it, I'm seeing there's a lot more depth and detail and this is kind of a more Euro influenced Cadillac, a car that's designed for people who are young and trendy and hip. And as you can see by me, I am none of those things. So what you will get is a car that's quite practical, well-made, um, very good on petrol and stylish. So on those basis, and not on coolness, because I can't tell you anything about coolness, let's have a look at the X-T4. So what do you think of the X-T4's looks? Well, they launched it at a sneaker festival called Soul DXB, if you watched the earlier video. And you can kind of see why. It has that sort of over-styled, busy aesthetic that's common to sneakers these days. Nothing like the clean old sneakers of days past. But I quite like it. I mean, the only thing I don't like about the front is the droopy headlights. Not crazy about these. But they are a visual signature. Otherwise, I like the grille. I like the proportions. I like these strakes down the center. It is a nice car and the proportions are excellent as well. Now, this is one of the few cars where the wheels look absolutely the right size. They're 20 inch wheels, but they fit perfectly. And the car is a good size for two people who live in the city. It's not too big, it's not too small. In fact, I think it's actually shorter than a RAV4. Really, really nice proportion car. The details are good. I mean, they haven't <laughs> fallen prey to the temptation to do lots of slashes and scoops and like, it's just a nice, simple, clean design. And the back, well, the back is also really nice. I like the way it just sits. It's like a Cadillac Volvo. And I don't know if Cadillac liked that idea, but Volvo makes really pretty cars. And this is quite a pretty car as well. I mean, everything is just neat tucked away. You know, these, uh, the exhausts just nicely integrated into the bumper. The tail lights go all the way up to the top. And you've got this neat little spoiler. I feel like this hatch should open, but you do have, of course, the classic normal hatch. One drawback of this car, as I pointed out before in the earlier review, is that it isn't a big boot. And this nice, stylish hatchback really, really cuts back on roof. So basically, you've got space for one big bag here. Underneath there is a full-size pair. So actually, it really is a 2 plus 2. Because as the back seats, which I'm going to do something unusual now, because frankly speaking, you've already watched the review, so I'm not going to waste your time. Back seats not super awesome for space and headroom they've got this little tablet holder here um i'm not quite sure this is detachable i believe but it really cuts down on room so i would get rid of it um the seats are comfortable from a legroom perspective I actually say it's best in class however the back is a little bit too upright for me uh and the headroom as i said is tight otherwise also not much to go on here there's usbs of course usb-c and regular USB, you've got heated seats because this is a European style car and not much else. That driver's seat is set at my driving position. So I could sit behind myself. I just wouldn't want to drive to, you know, Spain in this, in the back of this. I want a little bit more space and not in terms of legroom. Legroom is absolutely fine. No issue at all. It's more of the headroom and the backrest. I want to be able to recline and relax. Visibility is excellent actually. The, the daylight opening as we call it is great. But I would just like a bit more room back here in general. And this roof, thanks to the panoramic sunroof, loses a bit of headroom. It's not bad, but it's basically for two people and who take their friends around places, but not on long journeys. So I'm not going to waste too much time with the interior because I had a very detailed look at it earlier. You know what to expect. Just look at the earlier first drive. I think it's quite a handsome place to be. 
it's a very nicely styled dash. Definitely step up from the usual GM sort of lackluster efforts. Um, the seats are interesting. So the seats are pretty good if you're sort of under 5'10". If you're over 5'10", like me, it's a little weird because I feel like you sit too high. So all I can see is the upper eye line. And the, the dashboard is quite low down. It's actually quite a low cowl. So it feels like the car is about one size too small for me. But most people describe the seats as very comfortable. The leather is this beautiful napper, I believe. It's very soft, of course, ventilated, heated and cooled. Very, very comfortable. And I like the little details like this Cadillac crest. Um, I like the instruments. I like that they're still analog and not digital. And they're all pretty easy to read. All standard GMQ stuff. And let me just turn the car on and show you. Yeah, very simple. I would like all instruments to be this simple. I would also like all ACs to be as good as a GM AC. In 45 degree weather with a new engine, a 2 litre turbo, this AC is just an icebox man. Of course you've got your heating, cooling, uh, parking sense etc. The safety systems aren't too intrusive in this car, they do get out of the way. It does have of course lane keep, adaptive cruise control and all the rest. Um, your full row of AC switches here and a pretty nice fast screen up here which has all the usuals android blah 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 you know what to expect now it's a little bigger than the standard size screen which is nice i still think gm listen gm get these buttons big they're bigger in the ford they're bigger in ram and chevy product um dodge products make these bigger why are these so small look how big my finger is like my finger is bigger than the icon it needs to be bigger so i can just stab at it blindly so yeah, pretty good visibility from all angles. Um, lots of space to keep things in the cup holders. Um, here's an interesting fact. This has a Bose stereo. This doesn't have a very good Bose stereo because actually the doors rattle a bit. I don't know if this is a pre-production car, typical excuse, but I'm not pleased with the stereo. Um, it's got a QI charging point down here. It's got a wallet holder, I guess. Not a very big space, but for two people, it's more than enough. For more than two people, it could be a little cramped. Um, my one complaint about the interior, actually I quite like everything, um, apart from this silly gear stick, why, what is the point of these stupid gear sticks? You know, everybody has them, from FCA to GM to the Germans, and I hate every single one of them. So, because you never know, you know, that's drive. Is it in reverse? No, it's in neutral. Okay, now, reverse. Yeah, hate them. Um, two cup holders here, this is fine. This is the switch that allows you to go from two wheel drive to four wheel drive to sport. Uh, and I don't know why it's buried down here. It's almost like they don't want you to use it. <laughs> this is pointless. So this is actually the redundant hard buttons for everything that should be up here. So normally you'd have your music and navigation hard buttons up here. But because it's down here, I've always forgotten that it's there. The only thing I use is the volume knob. But it's a bit of an awkward stretch because I've normally my arm goes here. And now I have to do this claw move and just go down here. Mm, not good placement. It should be moved back up here. And as for the knob, what is this knob for? What is this knob for? Nobody ever uses it. Ah, I know what it's for. It's for China to enter Chinese letters. But overall, a nice, easy to drive interior. I think one of GM's best efforts in recent years. I mean, I have not had anything to really complain about. I'm just nitpicking here. All right, on to the drive. So I've spent approximately a week with the Cadillac XT4. And the biggest problem with this car is not the car, it's Cadillac. Because Cadillac had this big launch campaign, like I was talking about earlier, with shoes and sneakers and cool people. And it felt kind of exclusionary. Because to be honest, a lot of normal people who are looking for a nice, comfortable, luxury car would be looking at this car. Like, why aren't they marketing to them? I mean, this wasn't even on my radar. And I bet it's not on your radar either. I bet you didn't click on this review. You landed up on it. Because you were not thinking about the X-T4. Because Cadillac, for some reason, doesn't seem... It seems to be focusing on a very narrow group of people. And for most people, this is actually a really you know, good car. The more I spend time with it, the more I think, well, why wouldn't I have one of this? Why wasn't I considering this car? Uh, why was I looking at the Audi Q3? Why was I looking at the BMW X1? Just because of the badge? And that's the problem. Cadillac's brand image, yeah, I know. It's still got a long way to go. It's neither that old luxury American boat, or nor is it... A sporty German or is it a comfortable uh, Jaguar type car the only real competitor to this car is the Jaguar E-Pace which I think is slightly better the Jaguar E-Pace has the better sound system uh, and slightly better handling but the Jaguar E-Pace is I believe more expensive I could be wrong on that uh, and I don't think it looks as good I think this is a good-looking car and I keep thinking why are not more people talking about this car 
this car needs to be every person who's sort of 25 to 30 they got their first job they're tired of buying Japanese cars they should be looking at one of these because it's a nice smart choice it's very well equipped it's got adaptive cruise control I'm pointing at this it's adaptive cruise control it's got uh, CarPlay blah 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 all the safety kit so it looks after you and it's a nice easy car to drive the fuel economy is sensational it quotes 7.8 I would say it's doing even better than that in the right hands. It has this nice thing that you can do from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. So, it's a very sensible choice. Why aren't more people talking about it? Um, it's not an influencer's car. It is not a car for influencers because it doesn't have any gimmicky, stupid shit that influencers like. What it is, is just a well-executed executed American car. Uh, well, it's well-educated, but it is a well-educated car. It feels like everything has been thought about. And the more I think about it, it makes me mad that Companies like Cadillac think that only people in silly shoes and, you know, too tight t-shirts are the ones who buy this car. Because I really think uh, most people really like it. And at 145 it's not that expensive. So, compared to the Germans. It's, the problem with car is not the car, it's Cadillac. Um, also this gear stick, which I don't like. So, I'm going to do a bit of off-roading. Now, we're going to do the off-road section. We're going to do the off-road section. Hold on, hold on, off-road section. Off-road section. Right, that was enough for the off-road section. That was enough the off-road section. Let's put it into sport mode. It's not an off-roader. Who cares? You never put it off-road. Little checkered flag. Ooh, it's got a nice bunch of punch of torque around 3,000 RPM. This is a very very responsive car. So the uh, the engine is really nice. Makes a really nice. okay. I'm heading to the off-road section. Two part two. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do this in two-wheel drive because I'm a maverick. Um, the ride is pretty good on 20s. So on big bumps, there's like a lack of compression. Or oh, is it rebound? I'm not sure. So basically, it goes whoop up. Uh, it feels the car gets a bit weightless because it's not a heavy car. Yeah, I did that in two-wheel drive fine. Whoa! I quite like that. Um, the gearbox is pretty good. I mean, the paddles. I've never this week felt the need to use the paddles because the gearbox is fine. There's not a sport mode, but it's in sport now. Oh no, it's not in sport. It now is in sport. But you know, unusually for a modern car, the throttle oh it keeps in so sport is also all-wheel drive. Interesting. We're coming up a tricky corner. So basically it sort of makes throttle response a bit better, the gearbox a bit sharper, blah blah blah. You'll never use it. Never use it, let's be honest. Steering is very good. I like the way this car feels nimble, light. Tricky corner, tricky corner, tricky corner, tricky corner, bag sliding. Took it well, took it well. Now let's put it in front wheel drive. Let's adjust the camera because clearly the camera has decided to go with a very Baroque Jim Jarmusch style angle. This car feels nice in your hands. Like you drive it, you're like, you know what? It feels smooth, crisp, a little weighty. It feels kind of tailored. Whoever did the chassis on this, who did the steering, top marks, top marks actually. Way better than the likes of, say, you know, well, everything else. I mean, the Germans are too hard and the British are too light. This is a nice compromise. I like in some ways that the cowl is so low because I've got such good visibility. Um, the seat is excellent. I don't have much to criticize on this car, except the fact that I didn't know about it. Like, I wish people were talking about this car because actually they'd really like it. It suits their needs. I've been driving it everywhere over sand, uh, sandy tracks. And so there is at least one thing to complain about, uh, the noise. There's a fair bit of tire and wind noise, I think, which is quite surprising. Uh, I think Cadillac should have put a bit more sound deadening. And the engine, of course, you can hear every note of that gruff, rough engine. Why is it so gruff and so rough? I don't get it. But it's a nice car. It just has economy car uh, NVH, when really this is a Cadillac brand car, it should be a lot quieter on the inside. I, mean, I don't know if you can hear this, but this is it's not annoying, but it's noticeable. But I'm really happy with the seating position. Again, I keep saying this, like, everybody should have one. All right, sport mode, Zindabad, for you Asian viewers, let's see. All-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, right. Cross into a corner. Default is understeer. So it's understeering quite a bit. But 
I'm not feeling it sending much power to the rear axle to push it forward. So it's very front wheel drive bias. But it did it at about 100, which is not bad. So it's quicker than it looks. It feels like a quick car. I'm going to put it back in two wheel drive to save some gas. It feels like a quick car. It feels uh, very um, nippy. Whereas all the other cars these days have a really damped throttle and they're just like, oh, I don't want to drive. I want to save some gas. This car is like go, go, go all the time. Which I like about it. There's very little criticize about it. I mean, it's just a nicely executed car. Which for GM is not an easy thing these days. I mean, that new Sierra I drove was just such a like wishy-washy thing. I mean, I feel like they messed up on some really basic stuff like ride. But this car is fine. I mean, the ride is good. And that's what you'll notice. Like, I have no aches and pains after a week of driving this. I have, in fact, very little to complain about. Um, very little at all. Electronics. Uh, electronics occasionally are a bit glitchy but this might be a pre-production car so I don't know that's a typical excuse but the electronics have had a few glitchy moments other than that I quite like the Cadillac XT4 and if you were looking for a small luxury crossover or near luxury shall I say you should be checking this car out that's all I have to say uh, for the rest go back to the first drive if you haven't seen it already otherwise make sure you keep watching our videos and I say our I mean mine don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm just throwing up fingers now. See you next time.